I've traveled around this world and explored some pretty amazing places. This trip, which I'm officially or unofficially calling the 73 hour challenge will go down as being one of the most memorable experiences and without a doubt in my top three places that I have traveled to. The landscapes here were nothing short of stunning. And to think, the origin of this, a simple text. April 17th of this year, I sent a text to Kent, one of the owners of Turtleback Trailers, checking on timing of when I could get in there and make some upgrades to my expedition trailer. It was Saturday and he basically stated he would check their calendar and get back with me on the following Monday. Then he sent me this video. I responded stating that was a million dollar view. Now with the date locked, it's go time. Okay, so we are on our way, uh, or I am on my way rather. It is 11.45. The goal was to be able to leave at 11 a.m. Did I leave at 11? I left 10 minutes in, it's about 12 after. I just swing by my storage uh, to grab a, uh, I forgot my sleeping bag. And while I think the evenings are supposed to be in the 50s, I need a sleeping bag. So I'm on the 91 right now. We're showing uh, 344 miles to go, roughly five hours, 16 minutes, putting me there. If everything goes well, 502. Now, of course, uh, we have the fuel up uh, and assuming there's no traffic, but it's sounding pretty good. I'm on the 91 right now a little sketch driving on this because as i understand in the last two months there's been something like 80 or a little bit over 80 vehicles shot at on this freeway with uh, somebody with a pellet gun um and so this thing my rig kind of stands out a little bit and so hey you never know cross fingers so anyways zipping through this here so so far uh we're looking pretty good usually the 91 is a armpit terms of traffic we hit a little bit back there not too bad but uh yeah we're moving along Now I mentioned a moment ago, the title of this video is 73 Hour Challenge. So I'm giving myself 73 hours to drive out through Chandler, Arizona to the Turtleback headquarters, tear apart the trailer, install a new Red Arc Red Vision 30, which by the way is a badass battery management system, and also a twin 100 amp hour Brighter Products lithium batteries. From there, put the trailer back together, program the Red Arc, drive up to Sedona, drive another 2.5 hours off grid to get to that stunning location from Ken's video. Now while there, crossing fingers, hopefully capturing an amazing shot. Spend the night, pack up camp, and drive to my parents' place in Golden Valley, Arizona. From there, drive home. Guys, this is going to be one tight schedule. The six hour drive out to Turtleback headquarters, it went pretty darn smooth. I've been listening to a new audiobook, The Pillars of the Earth by uh, Ken Folk, which incidentally, I highly recommend. Okay, we are making some pretty fast progress here. Uh, Avante, Jack, uh, and then Ken and myself, everybody has been working together to really tear this thing apart. As soon as I get here, no sooner, I'd say within 10 to 15 minutes after I pulled in through these huge doors here, this thing was parked. Everybody had tools in their hand and tearing this apart. Now everything's gone pretty smoothly with the exception of we had one bolt right up on the top of the main wire harness there that just was in an awkward position and the head of it screwed, as you can see. It had, it had become stripped, which made it very difficult to get that pulled out. But we managed to get that out. So the cool part about this, uh, Jack, which he's with uh, Turtleback Trailers, incidentally, um, he has the new housing already wired up and so forth. And so we can see everything is, let me grab this light here. We can use that as a, and you can see everything is 
torn apart in there and so we are excuse the light there so we're ready so they're as you can see here they have the nose torn off the front of the the trailer here so there are the two new those are the brighter product uh those are 100 uh, amp hour batteries and lithium batteries and so the cool part with this you may be wondering why go through all this effort well we're putting two lithium batteries in here so from a weight standpoint the agms that were in there were roughly about 160 uh, 160 pounds each so those were 100 uh, amp hour agm batteries so they're very heavy these are very light half the weight and the fun part with this as well is you're getting more use of the actual batteries that you're putting in there uh, the agm batteries you can drain them down about 50% before you start getting into hot water. With the lithiums, you can go down pretty darn close to empty. And the fun part with the lithium batteries as well is they charge a lot quicker. And yeah, so we're, we're making pretty solid progress here. So the goal is to have most of this done today. So tomorrow, uh, Ken and I are gonna be scooting on up, up to Sedona for an overnight camping adventure. So far, Things are moving along pretty quick. So I'm gonna put the camera down so I can get back to doing what is important right now, which is putting this thing back together or torn apart. So I'm gonna go see what Jack wants me to do next. So stay tuned. Jack, this guy is a wizard and a master. He has the Red Arc Manager 30 already mounted and wires run and what he has done here and also with the red vision that's already plumbed up in the main box is a massive time saver on this time restrictive trip. It's hard to believe it's been nearly a year since I picked up my Turtle Bank trailer. Now, while here, I got to see new things that they've been working on. This goes back to one of the original things that sold me about this company. These trailers are so modular. And while this trip was short, I'll be certainly coming back here for a few new upgrades I definitely want. All right, it's 11. 30 what a long ass day i'm at the hotel right now uh and i'm gonna watch a little uh, american ninja warrior uh do a little computer work and then call it a night because of course i gotta be back down there at uh, 6 a.m tomorrow the turtleback team definitely really pulled through today it was really uh, surprising to see you know, all the wiring harnesses everything all basically plumbed up and ready from uh from jack there and that really cut a bit uh, a big corner of timing uh, out of this whole thing remember there's 73 hours and of course now we just went through uh, day number one and tomorrow morning it's all about putting this thing all back together uh, and then scooting up because as I understand the spot that we're going to be camping at tonight is a pretty hot spot there and I'm guessing from the view yeah it's going to be so we want to get up there pretty early so as soon as we get this thing buttoned up i need to run in and grab a few items out of the grocery store and then we're going to embark on that two and a half hour drive up to sedona uh, i forget the name of the uh Sudoku. it's some funny name i'm going to put it down on the bottom of the screen here every time i hear it i start laughing but anyway guys i'm pretty spent so i'm gonna cut off where we are right now and i will see you in the morning all right, Friday morning, it is 6 a.m. I'm outside the Turtleback uh, warehouse here. There's some air compressors going on, which don't work really well with the mics. Um, everybody's already in there uh, putting the uh, trailer back together. And so the goal here is to button up over here, get things put together, um, which I'm gonna be jumping in there in just a moment, but wanted to be able to speak a little bit about uh, where we're at right now. Uh, once we get this put together, the only thing that really needs to be done down here is going to jump over to a supermarket grab a few things for uh, dinner and breakfast uh tonight or dinner tonight breakfast tomorrow morning um yeah, so as soon as we're done here uh ken and i are going to be uh racing up to sedona and hopefully get the uh the spot as i understand last night uh, that you want to get up there as early as possible because it is such an amazing spot that so many people tried to get it and so forth so that is the goal so i'm going to stop talking to this here i'm going to get inside so i can get helping on the trailer itself while i was talking to the camera the turtleback team they were waiting for no one and closing off the install in blazing time now with the batteries installed the red arc manager 30 in red vision power up for the very first time
Now, if you aren't familiar with what the Red Arc Red Vision Manager 30 is or does, well, look at the Red Vision as the brains of my expedition trailer. I can control all my lights, inverter, water pumps, fridge, safety circuits, and guys, pretty much whatever I want from the mounted display or their app. And when I pair that up with my Manager 30, I can now monitor battery consumption and charge status. Also, look at the Manager 30 as a six and one 30 amp battery management. It's a solar regulator. It charges auxiliary batteries from my Jeep while I'm on the move. It's a 110 volt charger, battery isolator, low disconnect controller. <laughs> you could probably control the space shuttle from this thing. Now with the trailer all buttoned up, it's time to grab some grub for grilling and get on the road. After a late start on the road, Ken and I are now on our way. And friends, I can't wait to get there. Well, unfortunately though, this two lane road, as you can see, has turned into a slow moving parking lot for about 45 minutes due to an accident. With the traffic and asphalt behind us, we made it to the trailhead. Now it's time to air down the tires. Now this is Ken's second run with his new 2021 highly modified Toyota 4Runner. And of course, he's towing his Turtleback Expedition trailer. From the trailhead, it took us about two hours to get to our campsite. Now, I have to say this, this was a fun drive. Now, this happens to be the most aggressive trail that I've taken my turtle bike trailer. Now, I do have to say though, there were a ton of rocks and this was a very bumpy drive and in some places, a little technical on our approaches. What's funny is, Ken was first and I was following you know, usually between 20 and 30 feet behind him and the whole time I'm watching his trailer tackle these huge rocks bouncing all over the place. Certainly this has got to be testament to how valuable these icon suspensions are in these things. I wish I could say that my Jeep performed as well as my trailer suspension, but unfortunately, about midway up the trail, my check engine LEDs lit up with all sorts of service foil drive and related errors and felt like the truck went into limp mode. I had to shut down the truck and I moved it into two-wheel drive. Guys, I was, I was sweating my ass off here because I'm thinking, man, how far we are off grid. If I need to get a tow truck out here to drag my ass out of there, boy, that's not gonna be good. But fortunately, uh, when I started everything back up and back in the two wheel drive, the truck performed. It, did, you know, it ran like it was supposed to. With the Nittle Trail Grapplers aired down to 17 PSI, I have to admit that I was very surprised. I only lost traction a couple times. And when you look at this road that we're, I don't know whether you call this a road, but you know, the trail, the amount of rocks, and of course towing a trailer, that's pretty awesome. Now as we cleared the final turn that opened up to our camping destination, first time seeing this stunning view in person, no words can describe the beauty. This place was indeed very special. From the million dollar view, the rocks, the colors, the seclusion. My biggest regret is that I only had time to be here for one night. Ken gave me dibs on the prime spot to park my trailer and boy, check this out. After we each got our trailer set up, it was time to get a drink in hand and start cooking. Unfortunately, with all the strict fire bans, I wasn't able to use my favorite uh, J Shank grill. Instead, well, I had to cook our steaks on this butane Coleman grill that I recently picked up. Actually, I picked it up just prior to jumping on this, this trip here. Honestly, it did an okay job. It wasn't bad, but nowhere near as tasty as cooking over wood. Our potatoes and veggies were cooked on my Tempo Test Scottle, which has become another favorite way to cook while out camping. After dinner, it was so therapeutic, sitting on this massive rock ledge, Jack and Coke in one hand, great conversations, and watching the sun set over this red rock land. Friend, this is what life's about. With a long day, food, and a drink settling in, well, I'm running out of energy. It's time to call it a day. Okay, Saturday morning, and woke up at 5 a.m. for the sunrise, which I have my camera set up right now. 
things are beginning to happen. We can see right here in the background. It's gonna get looking. Actually, let me spin this around so you guys can see. I'm waiting for the sun to pop up the light of these. Now, part of the challenge that I set for this trip was to walk away with a shot that was not only super interesting, but something that also captured what I experienced. It located about nine feet down in a crack between these massive rocks that you see here, I found my frame and potential shot. Now, I just need to wait for the light to be where I want it. Bingo. As you can see, I used the wide angle lens to capture both sides of the rock wall, which creates a natural frame that is underexposed and dark, with the sun lighting up the red sedona rocks in front of me. Friend, this shot is a keeper I was after. Now I need to move on and start making breakfast and packing up to leave in order to stay on schedule, as Ken is going to take me down another trail, which, as I understand, is about three hours before we see any sort of a paved road. You know what, I'm going to just take this in for a moment. As much as I can enjoy this view all day, it's time to fire up the scottle and whip up some eggs, potatoes, and you know it, bacon. Then I'm gonna pack up the camp and get on the road. Heading down was as much fun as heading up. Now we did make a couple stops, one of which is where Ken showed me this spot, which made a very interesting shot. Time to air up and get back on the road. Actually, we need to fuel up first, especially me. Even with my reserve fuels for my packs, guys, I'm running on near empty. Well, as for Ken, I think he's here for a show. He has long range fuel tanks on that beast of his and he's good for another 4,000 miles. Okay, maybe not that much, but I wanna say his range is about six or 700 miles in that thing. From this point, we're both heading north on the same route. Well, almost. Ken's adventure is not over. He's gonna be heading over to the edge of the world, which I followed him to, or at least to the trailhead. We did our High fives, parted ways, and I continued north and started my journey to my parents' place. Now the rest of the trip, with the exception of stopping at my parents' place, was really uneventful and was pretty much just driving. Now I will double down on what I said in the opening of this video. Sedona will go down as one of the most memorable places I have ever trekked to. Now while I did have some vehicle issues, this trip was a big success. Now thanks to Jack, Ken, and the rest of the Turtleback team for kicking ass with the installation of the Red Arc Red Vision Manager 30 in just blazing times. Avanti with brighter products with the lithium batteries and I managed to capture a shot that I felt really good about. And above all, the secret don't tell spot, 
I would never have experienced it if it wasn't for Ken with Turtle Bank Trailers. Thank you for originally sharing that video with me and above all, taking me to this very memorable location. Mom, Dad, thanks for dinner and bed for the night. Now, as we close off this video, you might be asking, Alex, did you make it back in the 73 hours? Nope, I didn't. I hit some good old fashioned California traffic on the way back and I arrived about an hour and a half late. So that put me about 74.5 hours. All the same, it was a good time. Now, before we turn off the lights of this video here, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And hey, might as well hit that bell so therefore you're notified each time that we come out with a new video. My friend, I'm gonna be jumping out of here. You get out there, stay healthy, and find your adventure.